What's up, beautiful people? Today I'm going to explain the regions of the British colonies. The first of the British North American colonies would be founded in the Chesapeake region. When we are talking about the Chesapeake region, we are talking about the colonies of Virginia and Maryland. The first of the permanent British colonies will be at Jamestown in 1607. To finance this colony, the Virginia Company of London would be created. Joint stock companies allowed money to be raised for colonization and the risk associated with colonization to be shared by many investors. In the beginning, the Jamestown colony was a hot mess. A bunch of dudes, people were starving. Eventually they resorted to cannibalism. Beef, it's what's for dinner. But things turned around after the colonists got some help from the local Powhatan tribe. John Smith established military discipline in the colony. And another John figured out exporting tobacco would make mucho dinero. But don't smoke kiddos. Tobacco will be the cash crop of the Chesapeake and also the colony in North Carolina. And now while the wacky tobacco will make the colony finally profitable, it was a labor intensive crop. Unlike our Spanish amigos, the English English will not rely on Native American labor, they would just run away rather than work for the British. So at first, labor will be done by white indentured servants from Europe. These will be made up of individuals hoping going to the New World will provide them with some upward social mobility, and in exchange for passage to the New World, indentured servants agreed to work for a period of time, usually around four to seven years. Now indentured servants were not the only source of labor. Slavery will be in the Jamestown colony starting in 1619, and eventually white indentured servants will be replaced by primarily enslaved people from Africa. This development won't happen until after the elite class gets scared to death by Bacon's rebellion in 1676, and we will cover that in another video. It's going to be a very different story over in the New England colonies north of the Chesapeake, whereas in the Chesapeake it was all about trying to get that loot. In the New England colonies it was a group of people called Puritans trying to live out God's plan. The first group to the New England region were Pilgrims, a group of religious separatists who established the Plymouth Colony in 1620. Before even setting foot in North America, the male colonists signed the Mayflower Compact and an agreement that established basic government based upon majority rule. Following the Pilgrims in Plymouth were the Puritans led by Jonathan Winthrop. This colony was financed by the Massachusetts Bay Company and Winthrop established the Massachusetts Bay Colony in the New England region. Winthrop and his followers were hoping to establish a city upon a hill, an ideal religious community that could serve as an example to the rest of the world. Quick tip, if you ever forget who founded a British colony, there is a good chance his name is John. Generally speaking, the New England colonies developed around small towns with family farms in contrast to the Chesapeake region, which was primarily built around tobacco the New England colonies relied on a mixed economy of farming and trade. In between the New England and Chesapeake colonies was the Middle Colonies. The Middle Colonies relied on a broad range of European migrants, and as a result, the Middle Colonies featured societies with great cultural, ethnic, and religious diversity. A couple examples of this diversity. Pennsylvania was founded by William Penn, a Quaker who established a colony of great religious toleration. Many people came to Pennsylvania, and the demographics reflected a mix of not only Quakers, but also Scots, Irish, Germans, and various other groups. The colony of New York would be established where the Dutch colony of New Amsterdam had been. The British rolled up in 1664 and snatched the Dutch colony from the Netherlands. In terms of economics, the middle colonies relied on an export economy based upon cereal crops and other items you could see on the map. Sadly, they did not export cocoa pebbles, my favorite cereal as a kid, basically diabetes in breakfast form. And go ahead and let me know in the comments what you think is the greatest cereal ever. The last region of the British colonies were those along the southern Atlantic coast and in the British West Indies. Both these areas had the benefit of a long growing season to support the development of plantation economies that typically exported a staple crop. In the West Indies, that crop tended to be sugarcane, and in colonies such as South Carolina and Georgia, it included rice, tobacco, and eventually cotton. As a result of this cash crop export economy, these regions relied on the labor of enslaved Africans. In the West Indies and South Carolina, this resulted in the majority of the population consisting of primarily African people. Cash crops such as tobacco in Virginia, rice in South Carolina, and sugarcane in the Caribbean will be exported to England and once again mean these regions will be much more heavily reliant on the labor of enslaved people. The big idea here though is this. Starting in the 17th century and into the 18th century, British colonies developed along the Atlantic coast. Distinct regional differences between the colonies reflected environmental, cultural, demographic, and cultural factors. All of these colonies were under the British authority, yet they developed 
developed into distinct societies. And although technically they're under British authority, from 1607 to 1763, these colonies would each develop relatively free of British control. A couple reasons for this, Britain is hella far, or as some people annoyingly say, across the pond. Bruh, it's the Atlantic Ocean. It's slightly bigger than a dang pond. Also, during this time, Britain will have its own internal affairs to attend to, leaving the colonies to create their own self-governing institutions that were unusually democratic compared to the situation in Europe. For instance, the New England colonies had town hall meetings in which male church-going members could engage in colonial decision making. Southern colonies also had their own colonial legislatures. While the House of Burgesses in Virginia was primarily made up of the elite planter class, it did give a great degree of decision making and local authority to the colonists in Virginia. In my next video, I'll be taking a look at the transatlantic trade, how that money's being made and regulated. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Peace.